Today I'm going to be installing a glow plate from windrestrictor.com on my 6th generation Camaro. This episode of the Corvette Channel is brought to you by Wind Restrictor. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Scott and today we are going to be installing a glow plate from windrestrictor.com on my 6th generation Camaro. Now you guys have already seen me do installations on the Corvettes, various different ones, C4, C5, 6, 7, and you've seen us do all of the actual what they call wind restrictors because they have an open top or they are convertible. But for there's a lot of different vehicles that people would like to be able to have the same type of lighting effect that the convertibles and the coupes have, right, in the Corvette that you wouldn't have. I mean, they already have these for the Camaro and a, for the convertible, but they have them now for a glow plate that goes on the inside of the car, so you still get the same effect. The technology is exactly the same. It's still a U.S.-made product. Uh, the, the, um, the lighting is all, everything is all U.S.-based and they're made in Texas. They are completely licensed from GM as well as all the other companies that they work with. And so there is no, um, you know, there's no difference really between the wind restrictor and the glow plate except the fact that it's not really blocking any wind. Maybe a little bit if you have your sunroof open, but other than that, it's really not doing any job except for just looking cool. So um, when I got the opportunity to put one in the Camaro, I said, you bet, we've got them in all the other cars, why not? And as you can see, this one's in flashing mode right now. Uh, it's just in show mode. I've got a, uh, this one's got the multi, uh, multi-light control unit um, with the dimmer and all that type of stuff. And so you can see that we can just change it to be one color just by going around the ring. And we're gonna cover that in the video. Uh, so you can see how it all works. We're going to cover how it's installed and how you go about doing it. I am going to deviate just a little bit in this video from the stock installation. The, the regular uh, installation that they show in the instructions is for a single light kit. Now you can get these with no lighting at all. You can get them with just uh, one single color or you can do multicolor. And you can also buy a available a rechargeable battery that will give you about 12, 14 hours, somewhere in that ballpark of lighting time. And that's what, as you can see right now, the car is off, but it's still running. So um, we talk about in the video, we're gonna talk about how to wire it both ways, and that way you can, uh, you can do it. There's also some variations in where you're going to get your power source, and I'm gonna talk about that too. So anyway, sit back and relax and enjoy it. Um, like I said, be sure when we go to do this that you, if you decide you want to get one of these, we're going to put the code Corvette channel here on the bottom of the screen and that way you guys can call in or go onto their website and you can get your discount. Um, so um, the people are great. I mean, I just, I've been working with them for a long time and you just really, customer service, you just cannot get any better. They are just top notch. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me, but uh, if you also have any questions with them, you can, you can uh, reach out to them also. One other thing I want to touch, touch base with just before we jump into it, you can notice that this is not a stock unit. Um, you can get them already pre-done, or I had this one custom made. Uh, usually that runs about $50 to have customization done. So um, I had, you know, the SS put on both sides and the Camaro emblem, and then I had Corvette Channel put at the bottom. You can do anything that you'd like to do. Um, so when you are, when you decide you want to do a custom one, you're going to need to phone in. You're going to need to talk to them, let them know what you're going to want to do. They're going to put you in touch with a, um, uh, with a, an artist and they will be able to take your ideas or pictures if you send it to them and they'll be able to get this put onto the glass and it just it's just beautiful I mean they just do a great job so anyway we're gonna jump into the video now and we'll talk to you in a bit so before we hop into the car and actually do the installation of the wind restrictor 
I want to just kind of familiarize you with all of the different parts, okay? So this I call a wind restrictor, but it's actually called a glow plate for an interior, an enclosed car for a Camaro. If you had a convertible, it would be called a wind restrictor. But this is just what they call a glow plate. It's the exact same type of thing, except it's a little bit smaller and it allows it to fit inside the car. So you can see here, um, let me pull this up here. I had this one customized and you guys can do this yourself. So I had the SS emblem and the Camaro on there uh, put on as well as the Corvette channel. You can see that hopefully. And um, it is, this one is a very, very simple installation. Um, the wiring will be a little more detailed and we'll go over that here in a minute. But you can see here that basically all we're gonna do is we're going to fold the back seat down and this is a really big pad of Velcro. So literally, you're going to Velcro it right onto the back of the seat. So when you're looking, if you're looking back from the, you know, if you were leaning back and looking out the back window, this is how it will look. So it will be clear for someone looking in the back window. And when you're looking in your rear view mirror, you'll be able to see this correct anyhow because it reverses the image. So the, but that's how it would be installed, right on the very back of the seat. Okay, and we're gonna go over that here in a second. So that's a very simple installation in comparison to some of the ones that you've seen me do before. This is really simple. So it does come with all the instructions as well as whatever wiring harness that you have decided to go ahead and get. Whether you have got a single light on your wind restrictor, you would just have a single uh, two wires that just goes to the ground and to uh, to your positive. Um, I have elected to do the multi-light kit that allows you to do all the changing of the colors, um, make it, you know, dance and you can dim it and do all that type of stuff in it. So it comes with the remote control as well as a, a control harness on or a control box. And I'm going to show you how that's wired in. We're also going to show you in the event, um, in the instructions, it actually talks about uh, uh, two different fuse locations and what we found was that there some Camaros didn't have either one of those fuse locations so I'm going to go into the wiring and I'm going to show you how to find another uh, another wire or another source of power so you can tap into it okay um, it does come with the uh, the Novus clean which is the uh, cleaner that you want to make sure you use do not use Windex on these because Windex, even though it seems it's like it's slick, it actually is an abrasive and it will actually scratch the glow plate. So if you do that, then you're voiding your warranty with wind restrictor on it because it's going to start making it look terrible. So make sure you use this Novus Clean. You can get this on Amazon, you can get it at Walmart, but they include this. And I have, we've got wind restrictors in Jennifer's car, my car, actually are all of them now, now including this, and I still have some of this. This goes a long way. So if you just put this in your trunk or your glove box, you probably won't even have to um, buy any more. Honestly, this, I, I don't, I think I may have used half of a bottle uh, on my Corvette um, over the course of a few years. It, it just, it works really well. One other thing, guys, I just want to go over with you really quick is that if you don't want to go through uh, wiring it into your car, you can purchase a uh, little auxiliary battery that's rechargeable. It has Velcro on it, and you can just attach it anywhere inside the trunk or wherever you would want. It has an on and off switch, and then you can just turn your wind restrictor on and off um, whenever you want to. This will, this will charge. Uh, actually, it takes a few hours to charge, but it will supply anywhere from about 14 to 16 hours of uh, glow plate time um, on the lights. Okay, so um, I actually, I use it for a couple different ways. One is for that, um, I use the, I will wire mine up so I can wire mine in with the car. And then I also have another disconnect, what I call quick disconnect setup where I can attach my power to my battery and then that way when I'm at a car show I don't have to worry about having the car on but I can leave my lights on my wind restrictor or glow plate in this in this case but um, so anyway I'm going to show you guys how this is all done 
Let's go ahead and jump into the video. We're now in the car, and this is going to be the the simple part of it. We've got the our wind restrictor right here. We've got our back seat, and so you all I did was just move the seats forward first to give myself a little bit of room here, and you would have a little bit more room. I'm just trying to make sure you guys can see everything. So I'm gonna release the back seat here, just like that, and fold this down, okay? And at this point, all we're gonna do is we're going to attach the wind restrictor onto the back seat. I have some seat covers here that are on, on my back seat that I needed to be able to uh, cut some slots in here to be able to allow the, um, the Velcro to go through here on our wind restrictor. Now, I wanted to do that because it would be more secure. You, if you have seat covers on yours, you don't have to do that. You can go and get some Velcro and attach it to the seat, but um, I figured it would be much better to be able to attach right to the Velcro of the seat itself. And then this gets pinched anyhow. There's no stress on it, no nothing. So if you have these, it's not really a big thing to cut them. Just, you know, set it where it needs to go and then, and then go ahead and cut them. But if not, you don't have the cover, then it's not a big deal. You're just literally going to take this. You're going to slide these little guys in. If you didn't have to, you just would set them in place. And you're literally just sliding this in here. Now, all you're doing is you're going to put this right where this the wind restrictor bar, you're centering your, your restrictor to the center of your slot here, the latch. Okay, and you really want, you want it to just kind of sit just right at, you want to get it level, but you want it about, um, to be about an inch um, right at the, probably like right about an inch below the surface it's the, and you'll still be able to see everything here. Okay, so once you've got that, you've got that in place, you'll have your wire. Now, whether you have a multi-wire kit, um, like I do, that would give you four wires and you're just going to um, get that in here. You're gonna go ahead and you'll be routing this in here. We're gonna cover that here in just a second. You just get that stretched out, okay? If you only have the two wire kit, then you would just be, or the single single light, you would just be using the two wires, okay? So we're gonna take, go ahead and set this up over here, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wire that next. So I'm gonna show you guys a little trick here, um, what I decided to do. Now, you don't have to do this. The instructions just say that you can just bring your wire right across here and then fold your seat up and you can go ahead and bring the wire up into the trunk area. But I wanted to not have these wires visible when my seat is down, just in case I was carrying something, I didn't want to catch my wires, I just wanted it clean, right? So what I did was, I just took a little slit here, I ran my wire through my slit that I had made in my seat. Now, if you don't have these seat covers, you could just slit a little slot like right here, right where your wire is coming out of, uh, of your, uh, the wiring unit, or the lighting unit and you could just go straight down. You just use a, a, a coat hanger or something like that, something to fish the wire down through. And you're just gonna make a little slot at the top and the bottom of the, of the fabric of the back of the seat. So what I've already done is I've already fished it through and tied the ribbon cable to it, and then I just taped it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull it through. Okay, just like this. like that. All right. And now we're totally out of sight. Okay. And that is all nice and clear. So now at that point, we can move it right over here to this little piece of carpet that comes up over the hump here, and we can tuck it into here. I'm going to just go ahead and do that. Alright, and now your wire is totally protected and, um, and it's not visible anymore. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this light here so I can close the trunk, get that back out of the way. And we're just gonna lift this up and make sure that we've got the, got our restrictor or our glow plate, I should say, about where we need it. We may have to adjust it just a hair. There we go, like that. Maybe just a hair more. But the cool thing about the Velcro, guys, is that you can adjust it. All right, that looks pretty close. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna close it. Now, it may take a little bit that we've added a little more thickness because of the glow plate there, the material. So you may have to, you know, really push hard or slam this, okay? You can see that it's not really doing much. And there we go, okay? So now we can go ahead and we can move into the trunk. So now that we're here in the trunk, we had pushed the, you saw in the section just before, that we pushed the wire up through and under the carpet. And so what we've done is I've just literally just tucked the, uh, the wire here just underneath the carpet, just like around the edges. Now, you could elect to go up and over and then come up through here and be able to pull this access port off and reach up here and grab it and tuck it underneath here. But I've just elected to go ahead and just bring it under here. Now, the re it's a couple reasons for that. I'm gonna leave this off because I'm gonna end up using this for the ground wire. Uh, here, I'm gonna show you how to be able to uh, find your wiring or your power in the event that you don't have the, these two fuses that we, I was talking about earlier. So we have a, the fuse F33, which is for the, uh, for the wireless charging system that would be sitting between the, like in the back of the center console. Um, as well as I think it's F19, which is for the cooling part, the cooling fans on the seats. If you don't have those functions, that's okay. Um, you're gonna have to be attaching into the fuse panel anyhow. So you're just going to reach across here. There's two little latches on each side. And you're just gonna press in and lift it off. And then here's the two little clips right here on each side. Okay, we're just gonna set this off to the side right now. And that's gonna reveal the fuse box. Now, there's, I'm gonna change angles here in a second so you can see what I'm doing. But there's some various different tools that you can use. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ones, or actually three different ones, in case you, um, you know, some of you have, um, let's see, we'll go to a re regular traditional test light, which is just a, a regular light with a, a little poked end here. And you would just go to, uh, to the ground and it's simple as that. You'll be poking the tops of the fuses to find out which one will go on and off the key. And okay. the other one is a, a smart, uh, it's a little smarter type of test light. Okay, these have a logic circuit built into them, so in the event that you do poke the wrong spot, um, you're not going to blow any. <laughs> excuse me, you're not going to blow any fuses or anything. Okay, you would be hooking this one onto the power, uh, the battery, you know, uh, positive and negative terminals, and then you'll have an LED inside that'll light up. Okay, and then lastly, you have a multimeter, which just has. Uh, so, well, this one has alligator clips connected. You can take those off. You've just got test probes here like that. And you, so you could use the alligator clip on here like this, hook it to your negative cable, and then you can test it here by turning this to the, the uh, DC, okay? So there's a, there's a few different ways of doing it. I'm just gonna do it very simply uh, with the, uh, the test light. And something like this, it's, it's okay. Doesn't matter. You're just going to hook this onto the um, onto the ground. So I'm going to try to show you an example here of what we've got going on. So fuse F33 is actually right here, okay? And that's a 10 amp fuse. And you can see, I'm going to look up at here at the test light. I'm hooked up. There's no power, okay? This car also has the ventilated seat, so that's this one here, which is the F19 fuse. But if you didn't have that, you'd have to find 
you'd have to find one of the wires or one of the, the fuses that are off. Now, if you if you go to start probing these, you'll see that some it's, some of these, like I'll probe, let me probe one of these, and you can see that the test light is coming on. And you know, I would not, as a rule, I wouldn't um, hook the wind restrictor to that because it's always going to be on, especially if you have just the two light or the single wire with no switch. Then that just means that it's just be on all the time. So what I would do is I would search with my test light, and I would go. See, like that one there, that one's hot still. We're going to go to another one, that one's hot. We can go to a next one here, and that one is not hot. But it's a 25 amp fuse, so I would probably go up here to this 10 and see, and just lucky for us that this particular fuse right here is a, um, it's off with the key. So, and that way we can use it for that one. And this is probably going to be our best bet if you don't have, um, if you don't have your F33 or your, or your F19. Okay. Hopefully that explained it and it makes it a little bit easier for you when you decide that you're going to, um, you're going to have to hunt down, you know, your power. So hopefully that helped. Just for sake of time on this video, I went ahead and I already stripped the wires and, and did everything here instead of you watching me screw the screws in. But the this particular uh, this particular set of wires here is the four wire setup that is required for a multi light kit. Okay, so those wires would be coming from the wind restrictor that you saw me wire, and then it goes into this LED controller, and then you have a power port that I have already wired up with a with the you know with the plug in. Okay. Then at that point, if you just wanted to go ahead and have a battery, then you can have the battery that you can purchase separately. And you plug into here. It has an on and off switch right here on the side. And then it has a plug, the, the male plug. And it goes ahead and it just plugs into, let's see if I can do this. It would just plug in right here into these two plugs here. And then you're on the battery, okay? But what we're going to do, we're going to do it both ways. We've got it that way. So we also have a little, we have a plug here that has just the bare end here like this. And it just has a positive and negative, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to take, it also comes with a tap. So the tap that we are going to, we have to take our fuse out of our fuse box, right? And we're going to go ahead and pull it out. The fuse that we pull out of the box, we're actually going to, if you can see right here, maybe my camera will focus, there we go. You see it already comes with a, a five amp fuse, which is what's going to feed the wind restrictor. But we're gonna take the fuse that we took out and we're gonna put it into that slot right next to it. And then once we do that, then we actually put this little guy right back in the same slot where the original fuse came from. That then gives us power here at this connector that we will use here on the red wire. Okay, actually it's the yellow wire, but it's been taped as a red. Okay, so that way we know which one it is. And we're just simply going to crimp those two connections or that connection together. The other wire, which is your black wire, that one you'll be able to use the wire that's included in the kit right here and you'll be able to run that over to the ground wire or the ground place, and I'm gonna show you where that's at next, okay? So there is no fuse puller in here that you can use, so you can get a pair of pliers, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull our fuse, okay? So I'm just gonna pull that one out. That's our F19 fuse. And then what we're gonna do, I'm doing this one-handed here, guys, so hopefully it works okay. So you can see the extra hole, the extra slot I already showed you, and we're going to move that fuse into that slot. So you can see what that kind of looks like here, okay, like that. We're just going to pinch and push that in down inside, okay, just like that. It'll work. It'll work its way down in there. Just squeeze, okay. So once you've got it like that. You're gonna go ahead and put it right back into its slot where it came out. 
just like that. All right, so now we've got power there. Now, the only other thing we have to do is we've got to hook up our negative, our negative wire here, okay? And I've just extended a wire here so I can take it up. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually tie it into some of uh, the bolts that are holding on this little guy here. So we're just gonna take these little guys loose, okay? And that will allow me to take this cover off. So I'm just gonna spin these loose, set them down here. So now what that does is that leaves you two 13 millimeter bolts right here. So we're just gonna take our now our negative and we're going to just go ahead and hook it onto here. So now we've got our ground wire right here and we're just gonna bring it down and we'll tuck it underneath here. Okay, we'll get it all, all nice and tucked in. I'll bring it across, maybe like this here. Okay, and we'll be able to bring it down. Just like that, okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna tape this, tape black tape this so it'll look nice and be nice and clean. And then we'll just, uh, you know, we'll wire tie the excess wire. Then what we're gonna do is we're literally going to just take this controller and we're gonna set it down in here. We'll stick it down in there. And then at that point, we have a little bit of room right here on this side, right underneath this carpet that we can attach the, um, the battery pack itself so that way it's tucked out out of the way, but it still is down in there. And then um, at that point, uh, we'll show you we'll show you what it looks like. But it's already it's already wired in. We've already got our power. We've already got our ground. You can see right there. And so it's just now a matter of cleaning it up and making it look nice. So now what you can see we've got it all wired here, nice and tight. We've got our ground wire coming around right here, and it's just going to go underneath the carpet right there like that, okay? And then what we'll do is we have, we have our battery, and if you're not using the battery, you won't use that. You would just go ahead and take your, your, the wire that's coming from your controller, and here's your wire, or this is actually the wire coming from the controller, and then this is the wire coming from the car, and you're just literally going to plug it in, it's like that, okay? So that would just get, just get plugged in, it's like that, and then everything will come on. What you can also do is then, if you are wiring it like this, that you can take the, your wire that's coming from your battery here, your little auxiliary battery, and you can plug it into here like that, and then it will come on without the car, okay? so. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna pull the, the Velcro back and we're just gonna stick it up inside here, just like that. So it's just up against, up inside there. It's out of, out of sight, out of mind, and not a big deal, okay? We have the controller, as you can see it, it's kind of sitting off over there. So we've got our, we've got our battery that's mounted right there. We've got our controller that's mounted right in there. And then we've got are all three of our connections right there okay so now we're gonna go ahead and put take up the camera up to the back of the car let you see it come on and I'll also film it as I'm connecting it and you'll be able to see that it comes on with a battery and then we'll go ahead and we'll disconnect that and we'll hook it up with the car we'll fire it up and it should come on there too got the camera rolling in the front we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug this in this is coming from the auxiliary battery right now so we're gonna plug that in and you'll be able to see that the restrictor should come on here in just a second. All right, so the restrictor is running right now. You can see it blinking. And so we know that our wiring is good to the controller um, and to the battery. So now the only thing that we have to do now is we've got to disconnect this little guy from the battery. And we're going to plug this into the car. Okay, and once we do that, Sorry about this, guys, me being one-handed. All right, so now what we're going to do is we've got it connected here. Now we've got to turn the car on, and we should get lighting again, okay? Okay, so we're going to hop in the car and start it now. As you can see, it's on now, and that's with the key. So then when we shut the car off, 
and it goes off just like that okay so that gives you the best of both worlds right there okay so now i'm just going to kind of go over the remote a little bit real quick for you um, as you can see, the restrictor is just kind of doing one of its light shows. And um, so I'm just going to leave it like that for a second. I'm going to bring up the controller here. So the controller has an on and off at the top. It also has the different, the two, uh, the two buttons inside the inner circle. That is the different light shows that it's available to do. And it also has a brightness, uh, a dimming, and a, and a bright setting at the bottom. So what you can do is you can you can go cycle through all of the different um, light shows that it has. As you can see, I'm changing the different buttons, and so it will do different things. Okay, just like that. There's a pile of different things that it does. Now, you can also pick a particular color, and you can just run your thumb or your finger right over it. And as you can see, I'm just going around, and you can see the restrictor is actually changing colors or I keep referring to it as a restrictor, it's a glow plate, okay? But same thing. All right? So just like that. So you can get it to whatever color you want it to go. And then you can also brighten it up or dim it down. It's hard to do this, but you're just tapping it like that. See like that. Okay. And then if you want to go back into the light show, you just press one of the buttons. Just like that. So there's plenty of different ones. And you can just play with it however you want. There's the flashing, there's the, you know, almost the disco style thing going on. But whatever you want to do, you, you've got it. So they've got a lot of different variations. Or you can just go ahead and go to one solid color. So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative, and if you did, you'll know exactly where to go to get your glow plate from Wind Restrictor. Go to www.windrestrictor.com, or I'm going to put their phone number also at the bottom of the screen here, and be sure and use the code Corvette Channel to get your 10% discount. Now, also, if you are going to be doing the multi-light kit as well as wanting to do the auxiliary battery, then you want to make sure that you explain that to them and that you are going to wire it the way Scott on the Corvette channel wires it, okay? That way they will be able to sell you the little wiring harness that you're going to need that we used in the video today to be able to give you the quick disconnects that you're going to need to be able to do it all, okay? So just be sure and mention that to them, all right? Um, other than that, um, I hope you found the video helpful and that you'll know exactly how to do it. And if you guys have any questions, feel free. You can, you know, you guys have my number. You've got my contact information. You know, it's the Corvette channel at gmail.com. And I will be happy to answer your questions as well as the folks at Wind Restrictor. They are really, really good. Okay. Uh, they're top notch. So uh, no worries there. You had a lifetime guarantee on this product. As long as you only use that Nova Clean that we were talking about earlier and that you only use that to wipe your uh, restrictor down, okay? So if you guys have any problems, feel free to give them a call. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. Uh, we are growing again, leaps and bounds, um, and so I just wanna thank you guys all for watching. Uh, the channel's growing, the business is growing. As you well know, we have TCC Customs, which is the main shop, and we've, we've started a YouTube channel for that just to show off what we do so you may see this video on Corvette channel as well as TCC customs that way our customers can see what we're doing um, but uh, I just want to thank you guys for supporting us it's been awesome it, this has been a fun run uh, we've been doing this since October of 2018 I can't believe it it's just been going uh, one other thing oh beforehand if you guys haven't subscribed please subscribe, please hit that bell and hit the like button for me. That helps me with, with Google and uh, helps me with YouTube. That will help me build to get a little bit bigger and better. 
Um, now, one other thing I want to touch base with you guys real quick. We are going to be doing a car show uh, up in Reno uh, on August 25th, 6th, and 7th. Uh, it's a combination poker run as well as car show. It's going to be held at the Grand Sierra Resort. Now, I'm going to put that information, I'm going to put the link on the screen of exactly where to go to get registered for the show and also to be able to get your hotel links, okay? It's all gonna be right there. Now, this is an indoor show, so it's, it's going to be the Camaro, uh, Corvette Camaro Invasion of Reno, Nevada at the Grand Sierra Resort. It's gonna be held in the Silver State Ballroom. It's a 45,000 square foot ballroom, and we've got 3,000 square foot of vendor space in addition to the main 45,000. So if any of you are in the area or want to come across and go, you guys be sure and register and we'd love to see you there. Any of you vendors, any manufacturers that would like to, to, uh, to advertise and or sponsor this show and be a headliner for the name, hey, we would love to hear from you. So I'm gonna put that information right here on the screen. You can reach out to me, email me. We'll get that. We'll uh, we'll get in touch with you, and we'll go from there. So, uh, guys, that's about it. I know I've probably talked your ear off already today, but uh, you guys, thanks again for watching, and you guys have a great night. Thank you for watching the Corvette Channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe.